In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you exactly what goes through my mind in a live regs head-to-head -head matchup of Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player that they can possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just wanna encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right -hand corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now guys, it looks like I have actually selected the wrong defensive playbook. And so what you're gonna see is I'm actually going to run a little bit of a different version of my 335 wide defensive guide. This is the 335 normal that you're gonna see in this video. You're gonna see a lot more uh, standard zone coverages and things like that. We're gonna start with cover four and we're basically going to run essentially a masterful, masterful cover four scheme. Now, one of the things that you're gonna know really relatively quickly here is that I am facing the Chiefs Obviously, my opponent is going to want to throw the ball uh, to Tyree Kill as much as humanly possible. And so what I like to do is on the short side of the field, essentially out of my cover two scheme, what you're going to notice is I'm going to run a lot of cover two. Um, and then on the on the wide side of the field, I'm actually going to run a lot more of like cover four, cover six, uh, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the, the, the starting point for the defense. Now, again, if you want to get my entire 335 defensive guide, I actually have a specific defensive guide on just the 335. I'm going to put that in the description of this video for you. On offense, I'm actually running the uh, bunch, the gun bunch. Uh, so if you want to get that, I'm going to leave that in the description as well. Now, when I start a game, I actually like to just kind of stick with the standard zone drops, just see if we can handle most of what he's going to try to do. Um, as you see right here on the first drive, we've been able to do just that. Um, now, right here, because of the down and distance, um, because of the down and distance, I'm actually going to go to a little bit of man coverage. Uh, and I have to be a little bit careful because of who he does have at receiver. He obviously has Tyree Kill, so it's very likely that we're going to see some kind of crossing route right here. Um, and then Jair, Jair Alexander makes a great little play right off the gate there with that. I was worried about the crossing route, and we ended up getting a stop. Now, really quickly, the real reason I wanted to talk through a little bit about, you know, kind of what I'm doing in a live online game is so that you can kind of understand it in real time. And again, this is what I'm running on offense is my New York Jets guide. Uh, if you want to get it, it's in the description. We talk about a very simplified version of offense and the fact that we can run the gun bunch. The beauty of this playbook, you you can run five wide, you can run gun bunch, you can run bunch tight end, you can run trips tight end even. Um, it pretty much has all of the effective elements. And so if you wanna learn how to do that, uh, I am gonna be leaving a link in the description below so you can get that offense. But we really, really are very excited right now because what has just happened is essentially it's a turnover, right? He turned the ball over. I'm in scoring range right here off the rip. Um, so all I have to do is just score. And what's, you see that little stop and go move? That's a nice little move on the base that you can easily do. But the beauty of this is if I score, like even if I only score three points, it's still kind of a, a, a check. A uh, little cutback right there for Aaron Jones. Gets up field. You know, really what you want to learn how to do with the running game is you want to be, you know, gentle on the stick a little bit. You want to kind of um, just work it a little bit. But... The point is, I get ball at halftime. So if I score here, it's going to be a two-possession advantage. I'm going to have the halftime advantage, which is why I always, and I mean always recommend that you kick the ball off to start the game. You always want to kick the ball off to start the game if you can. If you can, you always want to kick the ball off when you start the game. Uh, and the reason why is for exactly what's happening right here, because now you're basically in a position where you can pretty much in theory go up you know, several possessions. Right there, a little high ball in the back of the end zone, and we're able to get on the board early. And we're gonna go up by seven. So now what this means is we get ball at halftime. We really only need one more stop. If we get one more stop, we're gonna be in a really, really good position. Um, and so defense is off to a great start. Offense is off to a great start as always and we are up seven nothing. Now, um, I personally highly recommend doing the sky kick on special teams. You don't wanna like kick it short. You wanna kick a sky kick. The reason why is, as you can see here, I've got a plus three advantage. I've got a plus three advantage. I've got a pretty good opportunity to make an attack, okay? And that's all we're really trying to accomplish. Now on the defensive side of the ball, 
Whenever I play more of like a zone coverage scheme, those are my zone drops that I recommend, 30, 10, and 5 uh, for the flats and all of that stuff. And again, what we're basically doing here and what you're going to notice is I'm going to run essentially a cover, um, kind of a cover 6 style of scheme. And it's really, really, really good. Honestly, it's a little 3, 3, 5 normal, you know, it's really primarily uh, a zone drop scheme. You know, that's really what, we, what we're what we trying to accomplish here. So as you can see here, he's running short side trips. Not exactly a great, um, not exactly a great strategy. So we're just gonna sit here. I'm like stuck behind my guy, which is really unfortunate. And he does end up hitting this over the top there with the crossing route on the wide side of the field. I was hoping the cover four would play a little bit better against that. But basically what we wanna do is we really want to run like cover four, and then on the right, we're gonna basically run like a cover six, essentially. So see how that looks right there? So we've got nice little Mabel coverage across and actually a good read by my opponent. And I need to make a I need to make a little bit of an adjustment over here on this cover four drop or this it, it, it's basically cover four, but like I said, you're turning it into kind of a cover six. Um, so as you see right here, this is this is really what we're after. Um, and we've got that nice little uh, zone here on the left side. Or on the right side, I apologize. And now we should be in a pretty good position for trips. And he's gonna throw some throw it to us. We're gonna pitch it right there. Um, just because I couldn't gather myself. So I'm gonna get it probably a I might even get this all the way back if I can get out of McCole Hartman's tackle. Um, and I'm not able to do that, but I still got a really good play. And that was primarily due to me pitching the ball. I mean, that was, you know, if you can't gather yourself, you got a player right there, I would highly recommend just pitching the ball. But again, as you can see here, you know, we're going back to the bread and butter, the bunch, um, you know, based on what he does, it, it does inform a lot of what we do. But a lot of it comes down to simplicity. One of the biggest tips that I can give you for pocket presence, don't try to do too much. A lot of times, the people forget because of uh really probably because of madden 21 or uh, madden 20 a lot of people still operate as if they have a skate bar so it's like if the blitz is coming in they try to scramble out of there the problem with that is what ends up happening almost always especially if you're playing with the packers um you're not going to get out of there now right here this is actually a very very big decision and what i'm going to do is essentially i'm going to take a delay a game Right, unless he really gives me a great look, which he's not gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna take a delay a game. The reason why is because I can get to a 17 point advantage. Now, can I probably get this? Yeah, I probably could. If I ran inside zone or base or something quick, maybe if I threw it quick, you know, I'd probably pick up the yard. But Madden is all about possessions. We're off to a really good start. We get ball at halftime. We don't want to blow the momentum. We want to make him have to uh, actually work a little bit to get back in this game if he's going to get back in the game. So right here, we're just going to take our delay a game, and we're going to come out, and we're going to take our nice little safe field goal here. Hopefully, I can make the kick, and we're going to get on top by two possessions. Very, very simple little deal, and as you can see, uh, we're able to get it taken care of. So now we're going to get back on the defensive side of the ball and continue with our zone drop scheme. Again, if you want to get my defense for this, this is actually um, a very in-depth tutorial on the 335 normal defense, and you can get that in the description. And I believe it should just be 15 bucks. It also comes with my uh, Arizona offense, I believe, as well. And, of course, we're going to give up a Tyreek Hill, and that's exactly what we didn't want to do. I think I ended up – did I kick that deep? I might have kicked that deep. That's all on me, and that's so – that is so unfortunate, and that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I didn't want to have happen. So I think I probably kicked, I just kicked it too deep at the end of the day, and that's just on me. That's a, literally step, literally the whole entire reason for me kicking short is so that doesn't happen. And I think I accidentally just had you know one paying attention, and again, you don't want to get an autopilot. You know, it's really important. There's a saying in the military that talks about slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. If the, the quickest way from point A to point B is a straight line. So don't try to go so fast and don't just get on autopilot. You have to be intentional. You have to pause. Madden is one of those games, if you're not careful, you'll speed yourself so up so much that you'll run yourself out of steam. You've got to slow down and keep it simple. Super, super important point. As you can see, I just gave up a touchdown because I was being, you know, just too sped up. Like right here, uh, that was that was kind of a questionable read right there. Um, but what you'll see, 
from a pocket presence standpoint, instead of trying to roll out of the pocket with your quarterback, which is not really a, a great strategy a lot of the times, you want to stand in the pocket. And if the pocket collapses, just go down. Like, just, just fall down. That's all you got to do. That, But you don't want to try to scramble out. When you try to scramble out, when you hit that right trigger, um, what ends up happening, see like right here, I'm just going to back up and I'm going to throw the ball away. Chris Jones is wrecking my lunch right now. I need to double team him. That's another little thing, another little tip. Um, you know, we're, we're sitting, I think, he, I don't even know what defense this guy's running. He's running some weird like cover two with a bunch of adjustments. But here we go. Let's see if he sends pressure. And I just missed it. Now, I will go for this. Um, just missed the first down. Rodgers is tired. Um, this is a little bit of, uh, you know, just a little bit of a guide here on this. Uh, whenever you go for it, like like what I'm about to do, you want to go to like a, a strong wing type of set. Obviously, you want to put your best back in. And then you want to come out on like a stretch or a top, something quick. Right, something quick that you can get the ball if you need. If they give you a bad, if they give you a good look for it, but like right here, it's really hard to stop it. And of course, I'm in the wrong set. I messed up on my thing, so we're just gonna have to trust this running play, and we get really, really lucky. I think we're gonna barely sneak by and get the first down. Um, what you want to do is what exactly what I didn't do right here. You want to put your best lineman at center, and then you want to put three tight ends out here so you can audible to the goal line. That's what you want to do in short yard situations, like what I was just in. Totally did it exactly the opposite of what you want to do, but ended up working out for us. And we're able to hit him with a little power row, a little quick run. But if, if they're going to run, you know, again, you just, you have to force yourself. It's a, it is definitely a, a discipline and a skill. You have to force yourself to step up. If you don't step up and slide and kind of manage the pocket, you see the difference that could have made for me. I end up getting five yards out of that, and I probably should have been sacked. Honestly, like I probably should have been sacked. Now he's doing some weird stuff. You see how he's bringing all these people down and he's doing all this stuff here. Um, this tells me that, you know, he's getting very, very aggressive. I talk about this in my Jets guide, but basically what we want to do is if someone starts to get a little bit over aggressive, that's where you want to start to really hit them with like your, your counter play or your constraint theory play some of those things so like right here i'm going to go to actually my red zone play on this one but this is where you now have the opportunity once you've kind of established all this stuff now you have the opportunity to just kind of simple um you know simply carve them up here so you know again right here we got to get down not a good not a great uh position and i mean he's doing a lot I don't know, this is why 335 wide is so hard i think 335 wide is a very underrated defense um the way he's playing, especially with this user rush, um, looking like right there. Now that time I backed up a little bit, probably wasn't a great decision. That time out there was an okay decision. I don't know if I'd do that again. Part of it was mainly because of just Aaron Rodgers didn't have a whole lot of energy. Um, let's see here, we're gonna go to Jets Dig actually here and just try to hit him quick. A little air truck, just try to truck it up field. We're just gonna, and that's gonna cause him to waste his, or he's gonna use his last time out. So, you know, now we're in a position, seven to 10 ball game. Really, three points is okay. It's not ideal. Really want to get seven here. Um, so we're actually going to go to mesh post. Now we have to expect pressure just by what he's showing here. So we're going to expect some pressure. I'm going to go ahead and ID over here. I'm going to slide backside. Uh, if he zone blitzes me, I should have either a quick flat to the left or a quick flat to the right. So we're gonna to try to read this real quick. He does go zone coverage. He does get out of there. And that's that's exactly what I told you not to do. You really just wanna eat that sack right there, but good job by my opponent. And he's doing a good job. He's manning up the running back. This should give us a little bit of an opportunity here for the play flood. So we're gonna to go to it. We're gonna to go to the little smart routed hitch route, motion out, see if he blitzes me, he does. And we're able to hit him right at the seam with a little running back quick throw because his user is so down into the blitz and we're able to score, get seven, that's a big seven. And now if we're smart, we will not give the ball to Tyreek Hill. So one of the other things that you can do to prevent this, so if I look out, if you, I mean, you can see here, I could see where Tyreek Hill is, right? He's the deep guy back. I just want to, I just barely kick it. 
just barely kick it, make sure it's super up there. If I give him the ball at the 30, that's really ideal. Like if I can hold him to the 30 yard line, that's really what we're going for. So there you see, he gets the pitch off, jukes, and but but by that time you've got so many people down there, you've got a little bit better of a shot. Whereas if he catches the ball directly with Tyreek Hill, we saw what happened last time. So uh, defense, as far as this goes, is actually a really important possession. So he doesn't have a timeout. He has he has zero timeouts. So the biggest thing that he's going to be able to do is if he hits like a deep crossing route or he hits something like that, that's really what we have to watch out for. So uh, right here, we're going to go with, you know, kind of a Mabel coverage to the wide side. We've got this little short side coverage. Obviously, we're going to be t tailing uh, Tyreek Hill here. Just kind of force it, and that's exactly what we didn't want to happen. But it's actually not that bad because of the runoff. You see how much time's run off now? So now if we can just keep everything in front of us, that's really the goal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out, we're actually gonna just go ahead and come out in the cover three, uh, if I can find it, uh, cover three. And this is what you wanna do whenever you're trying to stop somebody. Um, so you see here we've got some man coverage. Obviously we've got you know all these zones out here on the field. We're gonna do that, and then we're actually gonna spy the left side. So you got see how this works. So and then now we've got this the seam. That's exactly what he needed to. Back on it, man. Oh, that's a little bit on me. That's a little bit on me. Good drive by him. Good drive by him. That's that's where these uh, sticky situations, man. You know, you probably I probably should have just ran man coverage. I end up going zone. Didn't work out for me. And now, as you can see, he's on the board. And I mean, he's hanging around. He's, he's hanging around this game. He's doing a good job of that. Uh, we're giving him way too many little things. That's why I talk about one of the reasons why it's so important to simplify your simplify your like nuts and bolts and get back to basics. The reason why that is so important is because what you want to make sure that you're able to do is you want to make sure that you're able to capitalize on the little mistakes that are going to happen throughout a game. One of the things this guy has done very, very well is he's capitalized on a couple of mistakes that I've made, and it's really kept him in a game that, to be fair to, to me a little bit, we've pretty much been the better player. He's just made about three plays that have kept him in the game. And so, you know, we've just got to be a little bit better on the little things and just kind of lock in and focus and just kind of, you know, work the ball up the field, do our thing. You know, we're clearly the better player, I think, in this game. We just have to continue to be consistent. And that's what's hard. Consistency is hard. And so that's part of why simplicity is so doggone important because um, because you have to you have to execute. It is so critical to your success. If you can execute, as you see right there, a uh, little, little stop and go, little get up field. And, uh, you know, we're 12 of 14 for a buck 06 with two touchdowns. Offensively, we've been able to execute. Defensively, we've been able to execute. But in the little areas, things like special teams, things like end of half management, like what he did, those are some of the areas where we need to get better. Okay, those are some of the areas where we need to get better. Um, until somebody can stop flood consistently, I will literally run it every play. Um, until I can see that he's definitely going to be able to stop this thing, you know, we're going to keep running it. There's that nice little dig route. That dig route is so good. Uh, most people don't understand like how good that actually is. But anywho, we're going to kind of jump up here. Here he goes to a little bit of man coverage, and uh, we're able to scamper up. And now we're in field goal range. You know, we're we're in field goal range. We're in a good we're good position. That's exactly what we want to have happen coming out of the gate. But due to the way that he's playing his defense, you see how he's kind of pinching people. I mean, he's really, really, you know, loading up here. So we're going to go with a seven-man max protection play just because we're kind of expecting some pressure. So we just want to kind of like, you know, force that. Throw a little across our body right there. It's probably one of the best, probably one of the best decision. I probably should have just thrown it away. Um but as you can see here, I mean, three, four odds of good defense because you really are able to disguise a lot of things. The one issue with three, four odd is at the end of the day, it's not the best when it comes to stopping, you know, stopping a lot of things. So anyway, right here, I've got a nice little dot to the tight end that I can't tell you how good of a constraint theory. Like I used to run the play mesh and it's a good constraint theory style of play. 
but Smash Return is way better in my opinion, and the reason and, and the reason is obvious for what you just saw right there. There's all there's all kinds of plays that you could put into the constraint theory category. But Smash Return is really good for several reasons. The first of them is that you don't have to motion. And here you see another little mistake. So I'm gonna kick it a little bit deeper. And now you see, okay, now it's gonna go all the way back to 20. He's gonna have a lot more room with Tyreek to get jiggy with it. We're able to go ahead and wrap him up. But that was a little bit of a mistake. I need to be a little bit more, um, you know, just better about that. So here we've pressed pause. We're gonna come back and we're going to go ahead and reset everything, kind of standard zone drops for what he's doing. We've been pretty good defensively. It's just a couple little things here and there. So um, anyways, looks like he's gonna to go to a little five wide. Do a little hook curl right there. There, we'll send the spy. And good read by my opponent. I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna try this style of approach. I don't know that it will work better, but I think it'll be a little bit different. So we're gonna do that. Let's do scene there. Throws it right to me, yep, perfect. So solid defense right there, able to go ahead and uh, get the turnover. Now this puts us back in the driver's seat, back where we wanna be. And now this is all about closing the closing the deal, closing the deal. So he's seen he's seen flood all game long, right? He has seen flood over and over and over again. Now we're going to go to our little constraint theory play, and as you can see, these little underneath little crosshairs are so hard to hang with. There's just so you start to really extend your opponent. Um, it's also a really good time to go to something like this right here, a little counter play. If you run something like that, uh, almost through interception is actually good. Well, interesting defense by him. We're going to sit. sit. Uh, now we're going to shift back to Flood. You don't want to go more than a couple of times without them, you know, seeing your number one, your power sweep. You really want to, you know, really get good at running that. If you get good at running your power play, um, then what happens is you, the other plays are much, much more open. So... You know, here, and, and we're going to go to Smash Return here in just a moment, but just going to kind of continue to remind him, continue to remind him that we like to run this flood play. So then he's going to start to adjust and adjust and adjust. And then what we hope happens here is now when we go to Smash Return, I'm looking at R1 right up the seam here. If he's open, I actually had him open, and that was a bad read. That was a bad read. I thought, for some reason, I thought that that, I don't know what I was thinking on that one. That was just a bad read by me. And I got really, really fortunate that I didn't throw an interception. Um, the way that he's playing defense actually does lean mesh post. We'll see if he goes man coverage here. He might. And if he goes man coverage, you know what? We're going to put the out route out there, the tight end. This little tight end out route's really good if they're running a lot of man. Uh, and I think we're going to be able to go ahead and hit the running back in the back corner. But he's out of bounds. So now decision time again. I don't want to go for a touch. I don't want to. I don't want to not kick. And the reason why is because three possessions is three possessions. When you can get up by seventeen points, it allows you to be completely up by three possessions. It means that you are in complete control of the game. With five minutes to go, you're up by three possessions. That means it's going to take him three times to score for him to be able to get back in this ball game. So we're going to go ahead and take our three. You know, those are two situational plays. Uh, in this game where you know we had a fourth and short inside the 20 we end up go ahead and, and and taking our three and i think wisely doing that has kind of kept us from some of these little mistakes that we've made on the kickoffs as you can see got the high point kick exactly the way we wanted to get it this time and now we're going to be able to shift uh back into you know defensive mode here so he's coming to run the trips tied in and as you can see here, we got a little Mabel coverage to the wide side of the field. Obviously, my user is going to be over there as well. I um, actually kind of like this. We'll see that crosser, short side crosser does. I guess it does do a do a, a little bit of damage here. Here, we're just playing max coverage. If he hikes it, we're just playing max coverage. Um, yep, throws it away. This is, my, this is a smart, smart move by him. But so second and ten here. Uh, 
Got some adjustments out. A little quick flip to the back. And again, it's just the little things. It's just the little things. We're forcing, you know, or actually, we actually just messed up. Um, so we've got that 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 uh, coverage there. We're going to throw a middle third in case, you know, they're running like a post route or something. And that was exactly what we didn't want to have happen. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I mean, that was literally like, I don't know why the deep half did not get over there better. Looks like he flipped his play. I really like the inside quarter. There. Oh, man, I just didn't think he'd throw it. So a little man coverage. Primary reason why you run man coverage in that situation um, is just, just to kind of force, you know, some things. So like right here, we've got – we should have – we're trying to really watch for like Tyree kill. So we've got a couple little cross man types of scenarios trying to take that away. And we are able to go ahead and user lurk him. And we might be able to get this back for six, but the defense all in all was very, very good. It's a bin, but don't the nickel three, three, five is a very nice little nickel um, bin, but don't break style of defense. It really forces and makes things very difficult. Uh, for you, you have to really work to score, and that's why I love it so much. If you want to get my entire three-three-five normal uh, defense, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. You can get that for just fifteen dollars. It also comes, I believe, with my entire uh, spread offense. If you want to learn the Arizona uh, air raid spread, if you want to learn the New York Jets offense that I was running in this video, I'm going to leave that down in the description as well. So both things will be linked in the description. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to ever see me play Madden Live, I stream every night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern.